stand together as the Bible is brought into the church. Please all be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Turn to your neighbour and see if you can recite at least one line of Burns. Saturday and is mandatory for those required to do it. 
Also, next Saturday morning, it being the first Saturday of the month, we gather to pray together here in the sanctuary for the church, for the community, for the country, and for the wider world. That is on Saturday morning coming up. On the other side, what have we got there? Just one thing I'm going to mention, everything else, I trust you'll read for yourself. The welcome badges. Those who do welcome duty at the church, you get little badges saying, Welcome, St. Andrew's Church. But surprisingly, they disappear from time to time. I don't think it's deliberate. I don't think we've got anybody who's uh, criminally minded. But you put them on your jacket, you just go home afterwards, and they don't come back. So next week is an amnesty. No questions asked. Just bring it back quietly, uh, and you'll be immune from prosecution. And we'll have our badges back. So all good. Thank you for helping out with that. Friends, these are the notices, and uh, I am grateful if you would take the bulletin home, make sure you don't miss anything that's going on in the life of our congregation. I'm delighted we've got Kirsten this morning. Uh, we're going to begin to see Kirsten uh, play for us. Uh, well, it's just perfect, isn't it, really, that she can supplement what we're doing musically from time to time by leading us uh, at the organ, and she's going to do that this morning. As we stand and sing together, God, we praise you. I'm looking for the words to come up. And here we go. God, we praise you. God, we bless you. God, we name you Sovereign Lord. Let's stand as we worship God.
pray you would come on mothers this morning, that they would be healing in their hearts, that they would be forgiveness in their spirits. Speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please all be seated. So, I wonder if some of the boys and girls might have noticed, uh, certainly the mums and dads will have, that there has been a, a very serious illness uh, and it started in China and it seems worryingly to be spreading in all kinds of different directions. Uh, and it's a worry for many people because it's a serious illness that can cause people to die at its very worst and many people have died and there's a worry it's going to go around further and further. So many Chinese people you see they're wearing masks just like this one. Come on up Elaine's going to uh, demonstrate and exhibit. So a mask like this one, it's got a little filter on it and it helps to keep out the diseases that can pass from one person to the next. Oh. She tells me she can't breathe with it on, so it's okay, you're only going to stand there for a couple of minutes longer. So it's kind of fun, but it's very serious. Uh, and people are wearing these masks to stop the spread of infection, to stop the disease going from one person to the next. That can happen through breathing, or maybe if somebody ah, sneezes or coughs, then an infection can spread one person to the next person and to the next person. And very soon, a whole town has the disease, the virus, then more people and more people. Some people travel, others get on planes. Before you know it, the illness has come to another country. So it's very worrying and very serious. Disease can pass one person to the next. Will we let Elaine breathe again? Yes, right, thank you. You can breathe. So bad things can pass from one person to the next. Turn to your neighbour and discuss what are some good things that can pass from one person to the next. What can we pass on one to another that is good? And as a follower of Jesus, I have got the love of Jesus to pass on to other people. There are good things that can go from one to another. Um, sometimes at Burns Night, which was last night, remembered in Rabbi Burns, people stand and sing like this, don't they? It's old line sounds. We're not going to sing old line sounds, but stand together and with the people around you, join hands like this, okay? As best as you can. Love, it's love, it's love that makes the world go round. And then we'll go on and sing, so pass it on, so pass it on to everyone. Here's how we go. It's love, it's love, it's love that makes the world go round. It's love.
diseases, we need to be very careful not to pass them on. The love of Jesus, we should try our hardest to pass on to other people. Shall we buy our place and shall we pray? Lord, we pray for the people of China and those other countries where the coronavirus is now spread. We think about those who are ill, those who are worried, those who have lost loved ones. And we pray that those experts who are, well, just the best at understanding diseases and how to stop them traveling, we pray that you will help them to do just that. But there are good things, Lord God, and we ask you by your Spirit, help us to pass them one to another. The good news of Jesus and his love. Help us to pass it on. We pray in his name. Amen. Let's actually keep praying. The words that Jesus gave us to say, the Lord's Prayer, which we've been thinking about through these weeks and will continue to do so into February. The very special prayer that Jesus gave all his friends to say together that begins our Father. In any minute now, the words will be on the screen for those who are not familiar with it, but most of you probably are. Here we go. You can bow your heads if you know. If you need help with the words, they're right here. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Fans coming forward again, we're singing two songs. First of all, there's nothing I like better than to praise. So we'll stand to sing, there's nothing I like better than to praise.
to be seated. So through all of life, uh, need we remind ourselves of that truth if God is for us. If God is for us and He has promised us and assured us that He is, then we walk confidently. Love driving out fear and all that can afflict us through life. Friends, we have a crash and of course Sunday club for preschool and all the way up through primary school ages. And in a moment or two, uh, I'm going to invite the boys and girls and everyone else, uh, the leaders, to go through there. So just in a moment or two, but before we do that, um, I just wanted to share uh, further news, church family news, if I can put it that way. And you know, as I think about the recent weeks, um, we've been through so much as a church, um, and it's been tough, absolutely tough. Not just the church, but the community. And on Friday, this church had, I reckon, 500 mostly young people here uh, to mourn the loss of their friend, uh, Bailey. Um, it was a very emotional but powerful morning, or afternoon, that's for sure. I can hope that would be the culmination of what we've been through recently, but not to be, because just in the, the first part of last week, we learned of the very, very sudden uh, and very tragic death of Pamela, Pamela Ramsey. Um, do you know, just such a fixture as part of the Ramsey clan here at our church, Pamela would have been just sat over here. Um, and so I think all of us are still coming to terms with how sudden that was. There is no news yet, yet of when uh, a service might be held. That's because of the sudden nature of, of, um, of Pamela's passing. So I ask you, please, to uphold, continue to uphold the whole family in your prayers at this time. And as if that is not enough, we lost also a uh, dear uh, Sheila Burnett, one of our older members to be sure, but a dear sister of the church, Sheila would sit right up there at the back Sunday by Sunday. She was just the sweetest lady. She died again, similarly, very, very suddenly and without notice. Her service is to be here in the church on Friday morning. So friends, there has been one bereavement after another for church and community. I ask you please to pray and to uphold those who are in the thick of that right now in the coming days. I know I can trust you to do exactly that. So we have Kresh and Sunday Club now, the boys and girls and the leaders making their way through to the halls. If you're here Sunday by Sunday, you'll know that we are working our way through January and February thinking about prayer and what prayer is and the life of prayer. Today we're going to be thinking very much about what it is simply to rejoice, to rejoice uh, in God and in His love, to adore Him, and just to acknowledge that He is God. So we're going to stand and sing two songs. Firstly, worthy, you are worthy. God alone is worthy of our praise and worship. And then we'll go on and sing um, of God's greatness. Let's stand together as we continue in our worship.
Sometimes it's very seamless as we move from song to prayer, when songs are prayers. So shall we bow our heads and as we pray, interspersed, we'll just sing the chorus. O come let us adore him, O come let us adore him, and then we'll go on the second time and sing, for you alone are worthy. And finally, we'll sing, we'll give you all the glory. We sing and we pray as we come before and recognize this is our God and he alone is worthy of our praise. Let's pray together. We are here, almighty and everlasting God, to worship you as you alone deserve. For in the beginning you brought all things into being. Out of nothing you spoke, and there was, and there is, for even now you hold all things in your loving arms. Lord, we adore you. half-hearted in our worship. Forgive us that we have been distracted <coughs> from worship. Forgive us when we are made of our worship no more than an hour on a Sunday morning. You alone are worthy.
sometimes it gets pretty stressful, but she keeps smiling. She keeps smiling uh, and seems never to get never to get too flustered. But in December, along with the others, Linda was ordained to the Office of Eldership within the church. Uh, Linda is reading for us today from the Book of Revelation. God for his word to us. This vision, John's vision of the heavenly places uh, and of the worship that went on day and night without ceasing. The heavenly host declaring holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Thanks be to God. Friends, no one has ever looked up at the night sky and declared Am I wonderful? No one's ever looked up on a cloudless night, seen the Milky Way stretching out and declared, Am I incredible? No one has ever seen the Northern Lights and been caused to say, I'm amazing. We are hardwired to wonder, and wonder, rightly, leads to worship. Rightly, when we gaze up into the night sky, we see the creation, and the move thereafter is to worship the Creator. There are moments in time and I've stood in such a place when one becomes so absolutely aware that it's not about me, it's about an almighty God who has made all this. We wonder and are amazed at this God. This is who we are made to be as human beings. The psalmist got it absolutely perfectly. Perhaps he too, on a night such as the one just pictured, was caused to say, Lord, our Lord, you have set your glory in the heavens. The starry hosts. And of course the psalmist recognising that this is the work of 
God's hands. Rightly, the creation causes us to be awestruck, awestruck. Incidentally, a scientific understanding needn't lessen that one little bit. On the contrary, the more I learn, scientifically speaking, about the wonders of our universe, the more I am in awe of this amazing God. When I think that we're talking about 14 billion years of the history of this universe, when I consider that in our galaxy alone, there are something like a hundred thousand million stars, each created and crafted by this God, my wonder is not lessened but increased. You alone are worthy of our praise. <coughs> These feelings that arise within us naturally, or at least they should, are beautifully encapsulated in the first eight words of the Lord's Prayer that we said earlier today. The prayer model, if you like, that Jesus gave his disciples when they asked him, teach us, Lord, how to pray. To the creator of it all, and the one who is above all, we say, hallowed be your name. We mustn't skip past the first part of the Lord's Prayer as if it was a kind of perfunctory greeting. It's much more than that. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. This hallowing, this honouring, this adoring is what we mean when we come to the R in the word pray that we have named rejoice. Last week, you will recall if you were here, we talked about the necessity to stop in the busyness of our lives to pause for long enough, to be still that we might know that he is God. And then having paused, we move seamlessly to adore him, to hallow him, to honour and acknowledge that this is God in all of his glory, nothing more, nothing less. And with those things in our hearts and in our minds, we rejoice. Friends, this is the part of prayer that we look at today. Now, some 800 years ago, there was a wealthy lawyer by the name of Bernard of Quantaville. There is no picture of him as such, just this grainy image. Now, Bernard heard a report that a 25-year-old ex-soldier called Giovanni, let me try that with accent, Giovanni. <laughs> and this Giovanni, living in the Italian district of Umbria, had recently given away everything he had to the poor. Who was this man? Why had he done it? Was he mad? Determined to find out the answers to these questions, Bernard went to the town, to the village where Giovanni lived. And finding him, he made his acquaintance and then asked Giovanni if he would spend the evening and stay the night at his lodgings. And once Giovanni was in his room, Bernard stationed himself at the door of his room and threw a little peephole resolved to observe through the night if anything should happen. And so when the house fell quiet, Bernard watched in amazement as Giovanni rose from his bed, knelt down and began to repeat over and over a single simple phrase, my God and my all. My God and my all. And through the long watches of the night, there was Giovanni at the end of his bed, declaring over and over again, My God and my all. 
so inspired was Bernard by this all-consuming love for the Lord that he was witnessing, that he gave away his considerable wealth and became Giovanni's first follower. Within a year, there were 11 of them. Within a decade, 5,000 of them gathered around Giovanni, all of them having committed to a life of simplicity. Within a generation, the influence of these men had been felt all across Europe. Now I wonder if any historians among you would know who this Giovanni was. He became known better as St. Francis of Assisi. And a whole movement arose around his simple prayer of adoration and rejoicing, my God and my all. It defined the movement. It defined those who gave themselves to Christ and were part of Francis's group. You see, it's being so sure that he is my God and my all that gives the freedom to live. And in Francis's case, the freedom to give away all the earthly things that so entrap us, so beguile us, so it distract our attention. That life of simplicity that Francis embraced because he had come to know in the deepest place my God and my all. When we honour God, when we rejoice and say, hallowed be your name, we find a new perspective in life. Everything, everything falls into place. Some people maybe say, well, that was all well and good uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Let me tell you about Sarah and Pete Porto. Sarah and Pete Porto from a wealthy neighbourhood in London. Last year, Sarah, she lost her mother and inherited uh, a sizable son. And with that, they moved to Manenberg, one of the roughest, toughest neighbourhoods of Cape Town in South Africa. A, ne a neighbourhood awash with gangs and violence and drugs. And there Sarah and Pete, having given away everything other than what it took to buy this simple house, there they lived. And there they cared and showed and are showing because it only they only went there last year are showing the love of Christ as Francis did all those centuries ago to those in that day. You see, they too had come to see my God and my all and everything else in their life revolves now around that. This conviction this coming to rejoice and thank God in all our lives changes our lives. Incidentally, Lenin admired St. Francis of Assisi greatly. And look what he said. Give me ten men like Francis of Assisi and I will rule the world. Isn't it ironic though? Francis had no intention of ruling. He gave it all away to live simply and to love. And he was able to do that because first he adored. First he acknowledged God. He honoured God. He knew that God was all in all. And with that disposition, with that attitude, he was free to live and to love God. Accordingly. Friends, if we are to pray, then first we must pause, as I said last week, and then we must begin to honour God.
to say perhaps time and time again, hallowed be thy name. <coughs> this honouring, hallowed be thy name. To bow before God and rejoice, simply to be in his presence and to know his love. And there we should linger, not rushing forward. Do remember uh, when our boys were much younger, um, I was often away, and not least when I was uh, working on my Doctor of Ministry at Princeton in America. I was away for a month at a time, and there was Elaine looking after those three lively boisterous boys who were just this age. And I still think, wow, that was, that was big of her to take that on and to let me do what I was going to do. But I also remember coming back, and, uh, and there there would be like a little welcoming committee. But as the boys were looking at me coming up the garden path and into the back door at the house, they weren't so much looking at me, they were looking at my bag. <laughs> and kind of thinking to themselves, you could see it on their little faces, has dad brought us something back from America? Is he carrying a polythene bag or is his case bulging? So it is to be a little child. Almost What's he got for me? Guess it would have been nice if they just said, Hey Dad, wonderful that you're here. I wonder if in our prayers we're too quick to skip on to that bit, like the kids. I want this, I want this, I want this. What you got for me? Next week we will consider what it is to ask in our prayers. Jesus encourages us to ask of our Father. But friends, don't get to asking before first we've just worshipped and rejoiced in him. Let's not turn it into a Christmas list. First of all, we rejoice. We say, hallowed be your name. We just thrill to be in God's presence. Access for us through Christ. We thrill and rejoice just to be in God's presence long before we start to say, ask Him for what God might give us and how He might bless us. Don't miss the R. We pause, we will ask, but before that we rejoice. And friends, when we do so, we are for those special and treasured moments taking our place with the heavenly host. And one day we shall join them and shall be forever with them in that place where worship shall never cease. But for as long as we journey here on earth, and when we say, hallowed be your name, when we adore him, when we say, come let us adore him, when we say, you alone are worthy, when we take that time to rejoice in the presence of God, then we are mystically part of that heavenly host and with them, caught up with them, we declare, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Of course, this is a good God who will pour out his blessings upon us. But let's not rush past that opportunity just to say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. I truly believe that if that <coughs> is part of your day, if that is part of your prayer life, then watch how your life, little by little, becomes more aligned to the life of Christ himself. See how little by little your life takes on a new shape. How living becomes different as this becomes true. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. 
We say Amen and thanks be to God that this is possible. <coughs> this is our privilege day by day by day. Amen. Thanks be to God. I'm going to uplift the offering. Office bearers will move through the church to uplift the offering. As we do so, remain seated, please. Remain seated and we will sing just quietly together through the offering. <coughs> By way of reminding ourselves, Psalmist, that in the offering we give ourselves. Not just some money in the bag, ourselves. We said take this moment, time and space as we give our offerings. God, we bring our offerings before you, our offering for the work of your church, our offering being part of what we have received, our offering of ourselves, our skills and our talents, our offerings brought to you in thanks and praise, to you, our God and Creator. Amen. Prayer can take many forms. You get life and work. You may be seeing the, the latest issue. The piece in there, the, the big question that's always there, the big question this month is how do you pray? And there are short pieces from five different people associated with the church about how they pray, and they're all very different. Some start and finish each day in prayer with their families and tuck in other prayers during the day as well. One prays while he's driving with his car. With the radio on and occasionally stopping to listen to the traffic announcements or because one of his favourite 
songs on. He stops his prayer for that period. Some, like Martin does, pray while walking their, their dogs. One that said they get up at 5.30 every morning to pray. So that wouldn't work for me. My only prayer at that time of the, of the day is to get back to sleep. And some just try to get into a really peaceful location. Others pray very short, quick prayers, arrow prayers, just a single thought at a time as it occurs to them. But all, whether or not they put aside specific times of the day, also offer short prayers through the day as they live with God, sharing their lives and thoughts with God as they go through each day. So come, join me in prayer now. Let us pray. God of all of us, you call us to follow, you call us to love, you call us to live as your people, gathered together as your people. We bring before you our concerns. We pray for your world in all its extraordinary breadth and depth, with all its many wonders. Teach us not to take the astonishing beauty of your creation for granted. Help us to be more mindful of the ways in which we live on this planet. May our footprints be softer, our use of resources gentler, reminding us of our calling to live in harmony with creation. And we think of those people in China worrying about the illness that is going through the country as they lock down cities to try and contain it. We think of all the people, all the scientists around the world frantically searching for a virus or for a cure, for inoculations against it. Then closer to home here in the UK, we think about Brexit coming at the end of this week and the different views and different worries and anxieties and also the joys that different people have that did stay is at long after a long time coming. So we pray for the places and people of this world. So many languages, cultures, traditions, so many ways of thinking, of doing, of being. Teach us to celebrate the different and not use it to cause division. Help us to respect one another as those who have been created in your image. May our voices raise others up, our actions bringing healing, not hurt. Remind us of our calling to live as communities of peace and reconciliation. We pray for your church, not made of stone, but of flesh and blood, flawed and fallible human beings. Teach us to see Christ who unites us beyond differences in doctrine. Help us accept each other as those joined together through your spirit. May our life together be marked by kindness and our purpose to love as you have loved us. Remind us of your calling to live as your kingdom here on earth, as it is in heaven. Compassionate God, we pray for ourselves and our lives, Lord. You know well the worries and fears we bring with us today, those thoughts and concerns that burden us and weigh us down. In stillness, we offer them to you now, believing that you not only hear, but attend to all of them. Amen. 
Lord God, all these things we pray, trusting in your grace, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master. Amen. And now we stand, sing our final song of this, this morning. We praise back our rushing back up again. And we sing together 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Please stand.
Yield to God in your prayers, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, accompany you wherever you may go. Blessing is upon us. May the Lord 